Tina koto, tina koto, tina koto katoa. Inga mana, inga waka, inga reo, e rau rangatira ma. Tina koto, tina koto, tina tato katoa. E tipu aki o ke poniki, no rera. Ko te marua te maunga, ko mangaroa te awa. Very close. Inari kanohu o ke tamaki makaura ki te taha o te moana. Ko nati aitauroa te iwi. Ko Francis Binge taka ingoa. Ko taku mahi ki kiu kids ko te CEO. So welcome distinguished guests and a special thanks to Minister Viral for standing in at very short notice for Minister Little who's been um, called into um, urgency. So the journey began 50 years ago with Professor Sir Bob Elliott and Dr Ron Cowie with a vision that New Zealand Tamariki should have the same rights to health as children all over the world. These two paediatricians, Dr Bob Elliott and Dr Ron Cowie, had the foresight to understand that New Zealand desperately needed a paediatric research program specific to our own unique population needs. Today, Cure Kids is the largest charitable funder of child health research, and in the past 50 years, Cure Kids has invested more than $66 million, donated dollars, in research to address these health issues. And while we're really proud of some of the amazing resulting breakthroughs that we've had, there is still so much to be done. We are focused on the goal of delivering the research needed to enable healthier children with much brighter futures. Hence the significance and the importance of this report on the state of child health in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We wanted that guiding star, and how appropriate is that as we approach Matariki? We wanted to have that guiding star into what are the burning issues for child health and what are the really important needs that we need to explore through research. So to develop this report, we f partnered with the smartest people, New Zealand's most knowledgeable experts, and I'd also like to take a moment to really acknowledge Dr Bruce Scoggins, who inspired this report five years ago. Sadly, Bruce passed away in March after volunteering for Cure Kids, his brilliant mind, for 15 years. He was passionate about drawing attention to the areas of health where our statistics are shameful compared to other OECD countries. UNICEF re released a report last year which said that New Zealand health statistics compared to other, other countries came 38th out of 41 countries. And this is, compared, this is worse than countries like Chile, Mexico, Bulgaria. And that's pretty shameful. Building on our 2020 report, the key findings show that respiratory conditions are the leading cause of acute admissions to hospital for Kiwi children. And since 2000, the rate of hospitalisations for children with serious respiratory conditions has increased, most notably for acute bronchiolitis, asthma and wheeze. In 2020, one in seven children aged between two and 14 were being treated for asthma. Our children have a terrible rate of dental disease, and in 2019, 41% of five-year-olds and 31% of 12-year-olds had evidence of tooth, tooth decay. Since the year 2000, the rate of hospitalizations for children with serious dental decay has increased steadily. Rates of tooth decay and hospitalization have been consistently highest for Pacifica and Māori children, and those living in the most deprived areas had three times the number of tooth extractions as those in least deprived areas. Serious infections like cellulitis make up nearly 4% of hospital admissions for children, with the highest rates in one-year-olds and other much younger children. Largely preventable if these children had been seen by some form of primary care, uh, local primary caregiver. For the very first time, this report investigates 
data for rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. It found that rates of hospitalisation admissions for children with acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease have remained really high over the past 20 years in New Zealand, despite efforts to reduce them through targeted programmes. This burden of disease is particularly high for Pacifica children who were admitted to hospital for rheumatic fever 140 more times more often than children of other ethnicities. Māori children also experience inequitable rates of disease with almost 50 times the rate of hospitalisation for rheumatic fever and other ethnicities. And I'd like to just take a moment to congratulate the government for the investment that they made in the research programme for rheumatic fever last year. In 2020, CureKids also committed a fund of $3 million over three years to fund similar research from start to finish, both from prevention to, to treatment at the end stage. I think the thing that really resonates with me is that for all four of these conditions, we could be talking about the same child. And I look at that and think we're really not serving these children well. Today, we aim to galvanise action to reduce these health inequities and issues. The statistics clearly show what a daunting challenge we face, not only in the rates of disease, but also in the clear pattern, un the underlying inequity that is the foundation for a lot of these health conditions. We have a daunting challenge, not only in the rates of disease, but in that clear pattern of inequity. Reversing these trends will require a really collaborative effort across New Zealand, and Kirkids is committed to working with partners who have the same passion and commitment to investing in the big research questions which hold back the progress in eliminating these diseases, and hence a wonderful partnership with the Children's Commissioner. Earlier detection of risk factors and disease will help to care for individual children and enable healthcare interventions to be evaluated and improved in real time. There is an urgent need for New Zealand to prioritise the implementation of proven evidence-based measures to, as early as possible, diagnose, prevent, treat, and cure and care for our children. These measures should include plans which allow whānau to self-manage care for their children, along with much easier access to primary health care. We hope that this report on the state of child health in Aotearoa, New Zealand, will galvanise all New Zealanders to work together on evidence-based actions needed to reverse this negative picture. We want future reports to show that these negative long-term trends in child health are reversing, and that in our future, we will see and embrace healthier children with brighter futures. Harinoa e te whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'd just like to invite, um, and incredibly grateful to Minister Verrill for coming in from her busy schedule, newly appointed COVID minister. I would say that would probably be the most unwanted portfolio minister. <laughs> <laughs> so, and to add to that, uh, that uh, portfolio, um, Minister is also the Research, Science and Innovation Minister, Minister for Seniors, and as I said, newly appointed COVID Minister. So I'd like to invite Minister Viral to speak to us. Tēnā koutou katoa, and thank you very much. Um, Francis, uh, and I just want to acknowledge you for all the, your advocacy on behalf of Cure Kids uh, for research into children's, uh, children's health. Again, apologies on behalf of, of Minister Little, but the uh, faster he gets his work done in the House, the faster my smoke-free bill can get in next week. <laughs> so I want to support him in that. Um, look, we're here to discuss a very serious topic, 
which is the Cure Kids State of Child Health in Aotearoa report. And it involves such a thorough consideration of the available evidence, and I know is built on a partnership of child, uh, working with child health experts and advisors. The report makes sombre reading. It shows that while many mokopuna in Aotearoa have happy, healthy lives, too many are suffering from preventable conditions that affect their well-being. So it is a priority for our government and for me to make New Zealand the best place in the world to be a child. And we know that giving our mokopuna the best possible start in life will contribute to the overall well-being of whānau, communities and the country. So I just want to acknowledge the incredible mahi of many health professionals and support workers, midwives, LMCs, general practice teams, dentists, vision and hearing technicians, community health workers who care for our mokopuna and their whāna. So as we consider the findings of this report, it's important to remember that we have many programmes and a health workforce who continue to make a positive difference to the health and well-being of children in New Zealand. However, as we read, we see that inequalities, inequities still exist and a significant number of children are suffering from high deprivation and health issues, especially Māori, Pacific and more vulnerable children. <coughs> the report focuses on dental disease, respiratory conditions, skin infections and rheumatic fever and heart disease. The report also highlights contributing factors in the wider to the wider determinants of health, such as housing, deprivation, poverty, education and more. There is no uh, panacea. Improving these outcomes will require a whole of government approach to address health and wider social determinants and support the health and well-being of all mokopuna in their early years. I am confident we're making progress. The upcoming health reforms will also drive significant change and see improvements in the health and well-being of our children. Thank you. And I can also confirm that child health and well-being will be a feature of the Interim New Zealand Health Plan, which is currently under development. Let's start with oral health. Preventing tooth decay is critical to reducing the number of children requiring dental treatment, including in a hospital setting. It's also important from an overall well-being perspective. Children suffering from dental pain cannot learn, play or eat as they should be able to. The government has a number of prevention-based initiatives underway to further reduce the incidence of tooth decay among children, in particular to address inequities in oral health outcome, which yours, your reports identifies. So for example, I was very pleased to see the Health Fluoridation of Drinking Water Amendment Act passed into law in November 2021, um, and that's now in force. This has given the Director General the power to issue directions to local authorities to fluoridate drinking water supplies. And the D Director General is likely to commence issuing these directions uh, this year for some supplies. Community water improves oral um, health, community water fluoridation improves oral health outcomes for all but has a proportionately better, um, greater benefit for Māori, Pacific and people on low incomes. A 2016 report by Sāpere Research Group also suggested community water fluoridation results in a 40% lower lifetime incidence of tooth decay for children and adolescents. The Ministry is also delivering an oral health programme initiative for whāna, with preschool children to promote toothbrushing with fluoride toothpaste. Māori and Pacific whānau and those whānau who live on a low income are priority groups. This is because they experience significantly poorer oral health outcomes than the general population from childhood through to adulthood. Many well child tamariki order providers have started participating in the initiative, along with some Māori and Pacific health providers, and families start with further providers to come on board. The first phase of the initiative, the Baby, health, Baby Teeth Matter social marketing campaign, ran in 2016, 17, 19 and 2021. An independent evaluation of that campaign found it resulted in significant improvements in br toothbrushing behaviour. 31% of parents and caregivers saw the advertisement reported having who saw the advertisement reported having made changes to their child's toothbrushing. The Ministry is currently looking at mobile dental clinic capacity across the country. And as part of this work, the Ministry has engaged with a number of oral health providers to understand what additional mobile dental needs are across regions. These conversations to date have focused on the parts of the country where inequities are greatest, with um, uh, 
and particularly for young people with high proportions of Māori and Pacific young people. <coughs> Additionally, as illustrated by your report, rheumatic fever continues to be a significant health issue in Aotearoa, New Zealand, especially for Māori and Pacific children and young people. It has a substantial impact on whānau as well as cost to the health system, and it has to be one of the most devastating conditions I've cared for young, young adults with, in my case, uh, when they came into the um, hospital. Since 2012, successive governments have, been, have had a priority of rheumatic fever. It affects children, results in massive inequities, and is preventable. But the rates have remained stubbornly high. In November, we announced 10 million to support the development of a vaccine against streptococcus uh, to help with the prevention of rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. A vaccine has the potential to prevent rheumatic fever um, by reducing group A streptococcus infections, and the University of Auckland is leading research into that um, vaccine development. Since 2012, DHBs have, developed, have delivered a mix of prevention activities, such as sore throat management, improving housing through healthy homes, and raising awareness. The government also committed an additional 30 million from budget 2021 to expand and enhance the Healthy Homes Initiative. The successful program aims to increase the number of high-risk children living in warm, dry, healthy homes and to reduce avoidable hospitalisations due to housing-related conditions, including respiratory and skin conditions. We know it's making a tangible difference for Fana, and, we will con and it will continue to do so. Moving forward, we're on the cusp of the most significant health reforms in recent history. And while we're not going to see overnight transformation, the changes to the structure and approach of the new health system will have a positive impact on child health and reduce the unacceptable equity, inequities that persist, uh, persist. Through locate, locality approaches, community, whānau and providers will work together to identify priorities and develop solutions that work for them. We will also see an increase in support for kaupapa Māori approaches and Pacific models of care, ensuring culturally safe, appropriate and effective solutions. The foundations for these changes are in place with the Pai Ora Healthy Futures Bill now passed, and in one week our new health system will be live. So, poi poi a te kaka no kia pu puai, nurture the seed and it will blossom. Every child in New Zealand deserves the best possible start in life, no matter where they live or who they are. This report shows that we have made progress, but we still have work to do, and we as a government are committed to doing this work. In summary, it is time to reflect on these findings and also to move forward, building on what's been done, what we've learnt works or doesn't work, and being brave to try new things because our children are worth it. Thank you for joining us today. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora, Minister, thank you so much. So I mentioned before that we've worked for two years on this report with the Children's Commission and um, Judge Francis Ivers wrote the foreword. So um, Judge Ivers is otherwise occupied tonight, so I'm really grateful to Sharon Ke Kennedy Muru for standing in and speaking to the report on Francis' behalf. Great name, I have to say. <laughs> Matariki te tupua, matariki te tawhito, tau mai te wairua mai ngā ira atua, ki ngā ira tangata, tihei mauri ora. Tēnei te mihi ki ngā iwi o tēnei rohi, te aiti awa, awa, taranaki whānui ki te awa kai ranga me te whanganui ātara. Ngā ti tōranga tira ki pare rua. Ngā mihi ki ngā hau e whā, Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko wai a hau, he tangata tiriti a hau, ko Sharon Kennedy Muru tōku ingoa, nō airani taku whānau, uh, i ngari i te wā e tamaiti iti a hau, i neke taku whānau ki Aotearoa. I te puau i te tairāwhiti, kei tūranga nui a kiwa, uh, i nai anei kei tonohoa ki whakatāne. Uh, so nō reira tēnā koutou. 
uh, it's very fitting, I feel, um, to be here tonight um, to represent the Office of the Children's Commissioner. I'm currently on secondment from Toiti Ora, which is the public health service which serves the Bay of Plenty and Lakes Rohi. And this is very familiar, kaupapa and uh, issues for me and that community. So as we've said, um, apologies from Judge Francis Evers, uh, who's unable to be here. Um, and I'm very honoured to represent the Tari. Kia kuru paunama te rongo, o mokopuna live their best lives. This is the Office of the Children's Commissioner's vision, and as a Tari, this is our why. We were established to make this a reality, to ensure children's rights are prioritised, protected, and that mokopuna grow up in an environment that is supportive, safe, and enables them to reach their full potential and to flourish. Part of this work is to monitor how well Aotearoa New Zealand is implementing the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which includes having access to the best possible health care. The State of Child Health Report clearly shows there is still a long way from achieving this. Many mokopuna start accumulating health issues from the very first days. And by the time they are young adults, they are carrying a heavy burden of disease. And I'm sure as we've all heard already, this burden is not equally um, spread. The persistent inequities, particularly for mokopuna Māori, and am amongst one third of all mokopuna, bear the brunt of poor health, exacerbated by social and economic deprivation. This report being released today talks about rates of dental disease, respiratory conditions, skin infections, and rheumatic fever and heart disease, all of which we know are preventable. These child health issues also contribute to long well-being mokopuna. For example, they will be less able to access education, take part in school activities, and suffer long-term impacts as they grow up. As part of finding solutions, understanding the data, is why this report is so important. The Children's Commissioner welcomes the efforts of Cure Kids, the Paediatric Society, the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, and the New Zealand um, Child and Youth Epidemiological Service and the University of Otago in producing this report. Its details on the extent of the problem and provides a compelling call for action for, for us to fix it. That will mean acting early in children's lives and addressing whānau poverty and providing access to preventative solutions and healthcare for mokopuna and their whānau. We can no longer accept the levels of poverty and disadvantage which do not enable mokopuna to flourish. Over the last two years, we've been faced increasing challenges um, caused by COVID-19, which has not only affected healthcare but has caused increased economic and societal issues for those whānau in Mokopuna who are already being in situations of poverty and deprivation. What this report shows is that it's time for us all to refocus our efforts um, to reverse these unacceptable trends in child health outcomes. We must create the foundations for good health for all mokopuna and, and make a concerted effort to understand what we can do to foster health and wellbeing. That may mean targeted interventions to prevent diseases. It may mean support for whānau and addressing the wider social determinants uh, to ensure mukapuna are as healthy and to care for, them, care for them when they are sick and get them back to as good a health as soon as possible. I think we're all aware that this will take the organised efforts of society. Uh, all of us here tonight, government, iwi, communities, working collectively to provide the most supportive environment that will enable and transform the health of mokopuna. And that is fundamental to ensuring a healthy future for all. Ngā mahi nui ki a koutou mō tēnei kaupapa, tēno taumaha, tēno whakahirahira. Kia kuru paunamu te rongo, let us all ensure all mokopuna live their best lives and this report is part of helping ensure that. Ngā mihi nui, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you, Sharon. Really appreciate that you were hauled in at the last minute as well. 
So I just want to acknowledge Minister Verrill's her acknowledgement of our primary care workers and those people that are working at, at the front line. And you know, there's been a lot in the media in the last couple of days about just how much pressure they're under and uh, under ordinary circumstances, let, let alone the, the bizarre couple of years that we've had. So I want to echo that acknowledgement for those wonderful people at the front line. So, and on that, now I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Nicola Austin. So, um, Nicola has been a Cure Kids board member or part of the governance of, of Cure Kids for, in her, during her tenure as the president of the Paediatric Society. So, it's really at the coalface of what it means to be a paediatric specialist. So I'd really like to thank Nicola for her support in the governance of Cure Kids, but also to um, speak to us tonight about this report. Kia tato, Minister Verrill um, uh, and Francis, thank you for your kind words and welcome to those who are gathered here today. Ko Nicola Austin, Toko Anoa, no Waitaha Toko Fano. I tipu aki a hau u ototahi, no rera tēna koutou katoa. I am a neonatal paediatrician, so right at the start of, of the journey, uh, an executive member of Te Kahui Mātai Arutamariki, or Aotearoa, the Paediatric Society of New Zealand. And as uh, I'm also a member of the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, Paediatrics and Child Health Division Council, and a member of the Cure Kids Board, so a bit of a trifecta for standing here today. To undertake this state of child health reports, the partnership involves the New Zealand Child and Youth Epidemiology Service. It's one of the Paediatric Society key programs for quality improvement in child health, and was initiated by the Society in 2004, and with MP Liz Craig as the first director, and we've got Mavis, our current director, here today. And we're fortunate that in the second report, we have 20 years of data to reflect on. As has been outlined, the purpose of the reports is to analyse topics that encompass key markers of the health of children, where variations identified can be reduced, and we believe even eliminated with appropriate strategies. Targeted research and approaches can make a difference. And some of the graphs have flattened, such as the dental decay, aged five, with lift the lip, that Pat Tui introduced in the before school check, uh, and community-based dental initiatives. But more can be done to reduce sugary drinks, um, particularly in children under the age of two, increase the use of fluoride toothpaste, and her mum just told me recently it's very hard to find child-specific fluoride toothpaste, but really they need to buy the, just use the adult stuff and sparing quantities. Uh, and it is great that the fluoride uh, water um, uh, legislation got uh, passed. But we also need to start dental visits bef by the age of one. Getting in early, um, as we said, targeting prevention. Others have fallen, such as the rheumatic fever rates with the strep throat prevention program initiatives, and we could see a fall from 2014. But more can be done, and with research uh, and on, on the ongoing programs and support, we, we need to make differences to those of the uh, ethnicities and with deprivation that have the highest rates. Little did we know what would happen in 2020 and 2021. The data presented shows a drop in respiratory illness and cellulitis in 2020, reflecting how virus and bacterial transmission can be reduced by isolation. Flu and respiratory viruses didn't get into Aotearoa for a time, but sadly they're back with a vengeance. Importantly, we have learned to s it is okay to stay at home if we are unwell, and masks are effective. However, the gap in these illnesses between ethnicities has remained because the social determinants of health, such as overcrowding and poverty, persist. These factors require much more support to improve the health outcomes of Tamariki. COVID has also taught us a lot, and we can learn from what's worked. Vaccines are very powerful, benefiting all age groups and from children from the age of five and above 
have now been enabled to re return to important activities that support children's well-being, in particular engaging in education and group activities such as sport and cultural events. The vaccine initiatives that were whānau focused were opportunistic and were provided close to the community being served have been successful. They improved access and enabled health professionals to deliver care to tamariki and whānau simultaneously. And we need to include these strategies in our work plans. COVID also affected the workforce involved in children's care. The dental theatre lists were on hold in lockdown and with a 21% reduction in treatment in 2020, as uh, outlined in the report, but the decay is still there and the need is still there. So it's important that catch up happens, especially since there's been the further lockdowns. The public health nurses worked at the border and vaccine centres instead of their usual jobs. And with schools shut, nurses there were also unable to support Tamariki and Rangatahi, needing the health care that they provide um, during the school hours. And they, they have been key to reducing skin infection and rheumatic fever and delivering those programs. The Paediatric Society has a multidisciplinary membership. We understand that national collaboration can ensure equity of access and allows care to be targeted to equity and need. Clinical networks are another core business of pa the Paediatric Society and were established in 2010 in collaboration with the Ministry of Health. Relevant to the State of Child Health report findings, we are in the process of ex expanding the cystic fibrosis network into a broader respiratory network which can promote nationally initi initiatives such as the Northern Regional Health Authority Lungs for Life program aimed to target children with repeat hospital admissions for respiratory illness and chronic cough, both associated with bronchiectasis. Our eczema network has excellent videos and parent information on our platform, Kids Health, that also address skin infections um, management, and we are using more media strategies to promote this information and reach the families. Finally, I want to outline the vision for health equity in Aotearoa launched by the, Re the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, Make It the Norm. This was led by Danny Delore, one of our paediatricians in Rotorua. Good health is supported by more than staff and infrastructure and includes factors that promote healthiness and address areas outside the boundaries of health care. Ensuring healthy housing is available, that overcrowding is reduced, that incomes or support packages are fair, that whānau wellbeing is supported by community and marae-based initiatives, and that health resources must be prioritised according to equity and need, and delivered in a culturally safe and pro-equity health system. Themes that should be and are at the centre of the health care reforms. These themes were also part of our Paediatric Society strategic plan that we updated last year. And we're working on a strengths-based approach with Māori and Pacific communities and the workforce that, we, um, that serve them. Francis has indicated that mental health will be added in the next report. And anxiety and anorexia have increased with COVID and are areas of high need reported by our workforce. I would like to advocate for childhood immunisation to be included as well, as the declines in rates of the routine schedule due to COVID are of great concern to our members. The Paediatric Society has multidisciplinary leaders able to identify solutions to the health disparities in Tamariki. By partnering with the college, Cure Kids, who strongly support research in child and youth health, and with improved data for analysis, both from sourcing, particularly primary care data, and timeliness of the data analysis, we are ready to develop more evidence-based approaches with the Ministry and from July with Health New Zealand and the Maori Health Authority. 
to in the words of the Pediatric Society vision help Tamariki and Aotearoa flourish in health and wellness. Naurera tena koto katoa. Thank you, Nicola. You speak to the heart of everything that we aim for. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your um, wise counsel and the work that we do. So now I'd just like to invite the speakers up to take these beautiful plush chairs. Now we will have a microphone, um, but we've got to eat it like an ice cream because we are live streaming, so the closer you hold the mic to your mouth, the better, and I'll field questions from the floor. So welcome. So questions from the floor. I've just seen Pat Tui here, and I just want to celebrate top Dr. Pat Tui for the amazing progress we did used to make in immunisation coverage until 2018. So fantastic to see Pat here. Um, kia ora. So I, I'm Nikki Turner. I'm from the Child Poverty Action Group, and I'm from the University of Auckland, and I'm a GP. So feeling worn out like everybody else. So a, a couple of child poverty questions, and then just a health one, if that's okay. So. The, we, we've seen these reports, and thank you to Cure Kids and the authors, and to Liz Craig, who started all of this up. It's fantastic to continue to monitor our progress. And of course, again, it's pretty depressing. I think if I just look at respiratory illness, the feeling we have on the front line of health is a lot of these issues are not health. And so this is not something that many of us in this room can answer, but our feelings are the underlying issues, the two big drivers is housing, it's both insecure housing, it's poor quality, and it's overcrowding. All of those issues dramatically affect respiratory illnesses. Now, I celebrate the government's progress with healthy homes, and I just ask, keep with that attention and a lot more into our housing situation. I think we've got an enormous way to go, and I do celebrate what we're doing, but I think for housing, please, we've got a long way to go. The other thing about our illnesses, respiratory and skin and even dental, is undernutrition, and we're very aware of the issues around undernutrition, and that is a straight income issue for many of our households. So I'd also ask the government to focus on income adequacy. This is beyond our health issues again, and we do appreciate there has been some movement in income adequacy, but it remains inadequate. So I just want to ask again about the issues for our children and the poorest families around income adequacy. Quick word around immunisation respiratory illnesses. Uh, flu vaccine um, is difficult at the moment. Um, we did incredibly well with immunisation coverage till 2018. Then we lost momentum, we lost resources. So focus on resourcing and momentum there. Um, flu rates are out of control right now. We need to broaden our flu vaccination programme. Sorry, that's my comments. <laughs> no, no pressure, Minister. Thank you very much, Nikki. All right, um, so let's, starting out with respiratory infections, um, uh, I just want to underscore again the landmark first in world action that we are going to take on smoking, which of course contributes to respiratory infections, even in children, because they are often passively exposed to smoke and for those children's long-term health. We will, part of our legislation will include making a smoke-free generation, so to not enable sale to people born after the 1st of January 2009. Um, uh, your points about housing are absolutely well made. We have a $3 billion housing program overall, looking across a range of, uh, of tools. There we are starting to see some of the prices of housing uh, to turn in the right direction and have the biggest build program of public housing since the 1970s. This is a problem that sadly is decades in the making. It will take time for us to turn it around, but we are doing, we believe, everything uh, we can. Um, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about vaccination and um, 
uh, look, we need to build out what we've achieved during uh, during COVID and um, uh, look at the, um, you could start at every part of the vaccination, oh, sorry, immunisation um, process, including all the innovative roles, IMAC, um, your other um, involvement have been a, a part of developing so that um, Kaiafina and others, uh, we have a new vaccinator workforce essentially. Uh, we have stepped out and included flu in what they can, um, what they can vaccinate for. Uh, we developed a COVID immunisation register, uh, which is based on um, capable of making sure people don't fall through the cracks. Um, and we need to extend that to other childhood diseases. And I am pretty sure we have already funded for that to happen um, so that that can be a part of how we identify who needs to be caught up with. Uh, and then um, in addition, all of the novel um, community mobilisation efforts working, uh, as has been described earlier, with Farnell have to be part of our, our day to day. And that's what exactly what we're trying to achieve through through the health reforms. I mean, I think um, your points about income adequ adequacy are absolutely well made. We continue to work systematically through those um, uh, reports of the uh, Welfare Expert Advisory um, Group. We have made targeted support available for people due to the situation, um, due to the current inflationary pressures that, that people are facing, but I totally acknowledge there is more to do there. Well, tēnā koe, Nikki. I, you'll remember me. We were in a, in, a, in a paper quite some years ago together as um, students. So I just thought I'd just add a little bit of the mahi that we've been doing recently um, with regards to the Working for Families tax package, um, which is um, being reviewed, and just um, some strong advocacy around the, the perhaps the, some of the assumptions around the incentive to work is perhaps just looked into, and also um, recognising that, that it won't reach those um, most vulnerable whānau and those that are um, on benefits. Also the um, kind of kind of like the number of hours worked and how that flicks into whether you're in in which um, particular tax incentive. So that's some work that we've been doing um, that I totally agree that income inadequacy is, underpins a lot of these um, issues and is addressing poverty is absolutely key. Um, so yeah, look forward to the work that's progressed on that. One, one aspect that I think um, the paediatric, uh, as, as well as general practitioner, is to look at opportunistic immunisations and opportunistic t uh, adding to care. So um, instead of coming with one, one problem and not thinking about the broader health um, aspects of, of a family's um, needs, that we do have um, take the opportunities to provide better care. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to attend, Francis. Um, I'm Dr. Pat Tui, a paediatrician and the chair of the Better Start Science Challenge. So uh, my acknowledgement to Cure Kids for the uh, strong support that the Science Challenge gets from the Cure Kids program. Uh, my question really is about how we address the issue of short-termism. Um, when we look at the data that Nicola so clearly pointed out with regard to rheumatic fever and skin infections, we saw that the reducing rheumatic fever program was dramatically effective. It didn't just reduce rheumatic fever, it also reduced skin infections. And one of the clear uh, learnings from that was about the role of drop-in clinics and reducing the barriers uh, for uh, people who had difficulty getting to primary care and also the opportunity to put in place alternative ways of providing services that work for families. And so I would uh, ask whether uh, the Minister has any idea as to whether this might be uh, re-implemented because it's clearly effective and it's something that needs to be considered. Thank you, Pat. 
Thank you. Look, on that particular measure, um, it might be good to hear more from you about that because um, uh, anything that works in the area of rheumatic fever we should consider very, very seriously. Um, I just think about the short-termism problem. It's going to be very cheeky and say we'll vote us back for another three-year <laughs> term. But I think that <laughs> the, um, you know, this is precisely what we want to achieve through the health reforms. Now, I had a very brief stint on a DHB board before I um, came into Parliament in which we received our um, annual uh, our funding. We were often told what we were funded for after the financial year had started. So how on earth could we plan for um, our activities, particularly on longer term challenges? So the health reforms are intended to um, address that. Uh, we have a statutory requirement to have strategies and plans, including the Uber plan, which is the New Zealand health plan, and as, and as I mentioned tonight, that will include child, um, child health as a priority area for that. The plans aren't just a list of aspirations, they are actually intended to have uh, funding uh, and resources follow the plans. We will have um, the ability to uh, set budgets across um, multiple years, and we started to do that. And this, this budget's our first health budget that was ever a, a two-year budget, and the future cycles will be three-year budgets. So um, until we can get these mechanisms in place, um, we, we are stuck in the short-term cycle, and I think many of the things in health that have persistently been in the too hard basket, you could say the same of chronic conditions in adults as well, um, uh, w we need this in order to be able to do sustained action over time on them. Maybe just a small um, comment is uh, very much um, in the thinking of, of Judge Evers, our Children's Commissioner, is around community solutions, uh, mātauranga Māori and um, kaupapa Māori. So I think, yeah, looking at that kind of short-termism and longer-term partnering and, and that power-sharing concept around how we can bring about change. And we've all said that most of the health conditions lie outside of the health sector, and so that's the commitment to all of those big, broad social determinant changes that are needed. Um, so, yeah, I just offer that. And I think what you're alluding to too, Pat, is the, the in-school and the school nursing and the school-based care because um, they can identify, they still have to communicate with the parents, but it's uh, uh, giving that uh, um, insight for them to then act upon or to start treatment. Uh, or the preventative measures of, of washing the bedding, of um, covering sores, you know, those sorts of things and the health education that is provided by paediatric uh, focused nursing is, um, is very important. Any further questions? I think it might be beverage time. But look, I just want to thank uh, everybody in the room for your contribution, your collaboration. And, you know, we couldn't be in a, be in a better position to have the brightest minds in the room that are all have the same drive to ensure that our children have brighter lives, healthier lives with brighter futures. And so I'm really grateful to everybody in the room. And I think this is the beginning of the journey and that we, can, we all know, we all want the same thing. And so we should be working together. So um, thank you for your attendance tonight. If you want a, a, a soft copy of the report, it's on the Cure Kids website, curekids.org.nz. And, but otherwise, I'm really available to speak to any one of you on a one-on-one -on -one or, um, or any of our amazing teams. So thank you and help yourself to the beverages. <laughs>